Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalren and patch 9.1 is going to be releasing in a couple of hours from now. If you're someone who hasn't followed any of the updates for patch 9.1 and are not sure what you should be doing week one of this new release, like should you be doing the story stuff or are you able to enter raids or are any of the seasonal stuff unlocked yet, this video will hopefully go over everything that's available for patch 9.1 as of the first week. And in this video, I'll give you guys some of the things that I think you should be doing in the first week if you're trying to get started up with the new patch. It's a brand new beginning and a perfect opportunity for many of us that felt like you missed out on the first season for getting your KSM or didn't quite get the rating you wanted with the first season of Shadowlands or didn't slay that final boss for that heroic raid clear. Now is the perfect time to get on the starting line with everybody else because a fresh new patch and a fresh new season means everybody basically starting on the same starting line. So let's take a look at everything that's available for patch 9.1 in the first week. The first thing I think you should do is start the story of patch 9.1 and go as far as you can this week until all your alts can unlock a skip. Blizzard added a lot of skips for the story stuff because once you played it on your main character, you got the gist of the new zone and the new characters introduced, you understand what is happening in the game. For, and for your alts to have to do it all over again, it really removes a lot of that shine the first time you played through it. So try to get on your main character that you're planning to play for this patch and get through the story stuff first before you hop on your alts so then your alts will have all these various skips to get caught up to the end game stuff. It's also a good idea to do the story stuff as early as possible because a lot of the game aspects are going to be locked behind story like you'll be able to get renowned through the story, you'll be able to unlock catch up gear and open up new zones with the story so getting the story out of the way as early as possible is going to be pretty integral. Next, you should check out the two zones, or really one new zone and one revamped zone, Corthia and the Maw. Exploration is going to be the name of the game, as there's a lot more features have been added to those two zones. Corthia is this mysterious island floating somewhere in the nether that got pulled by the chains of the Jailer close enough to the Maw, and it's actually accessible from the Maw itself. You can travel between the Maw and Corthia because they're kind of interconnected, but still are separate zones. Corthia is the more mysterious zone with a lot of the interesting wildlife, extra rares, extra events, extra treasures. There's a lot of things going on in Corthia and unlike the zones of Najatar and Mechagon, some of those were very obvious. You knew exactly where the rares were, you knew exactly what the treasures were hiding, but Corthia has some events that don't seem like a rare until you interact with it. They don't seem like it will lead you to a treasure until you engage with the NPCs or the content. So it does have some secrets as it's supposed to be a whole secretive place. Then we have the mall, which is the same mall that we remember, but more aspects and more parts of the mall are accessible and there's more activities to do in the mall. Like all the covenants are now assaulting the mall, so you can join them in the covenant assaults, which is a perfect opportunity for you to catch up on some AP catch up on conduits and even catch up on gear and those of you that don't really care about conduits or anima there are also mounts that you can get from this so if you're a mount collector or just into collectibles in general it's definitely worth doing on a couple alts until you get the mount you want it does also offer soul cinders which will be used for crafting rank 5 legendaries so whether you're a collector or someone who wants to play at the end game the assaults is going to be something you'll want to do pretty regularly the assaults on ptr were spawning twice a week starting off tuesday for na servers and then starting off another assault friday very similar to the Nazoth assaults back in BFA for the last patch. So it's the best idea just to keep a track of the map to make sure that you're tracking if the assaults change and it might be a good idea to participate for a variety of different rewards. As of patch 9.1, the amount of renown you can get for your covenant has been increased up to 80. So previously you had a cap of 40, now there's a lot more to do for your covenant and a lot more rewards to gain. Doing the story stuff is going to give you renown for your covenant, but also doing the covenant objectives inside of your sanctum is also going to contribute towards your renown. If you're someone who's thinking of switching covenants for this next patch, maybe you like the soulbind changes or maybe there's a covenant class legendary that you're really excited to try, now would be a pretty good time to do it. A lot of players tried to get their covenant switches done before the patch went live, but you can do it after because the amount of renown that you earn in patch 9.1, at least for us in PTR, was doubled. So we were doing exactly the same amount of stuff, the dungeons, the world quests, the assaults, which also give you renown, but you were just earning double the renown to catch up to everybody. We also got a lot of new honor towns for PvP. A lot of them. And also with the new seasonal stuff coming out for the patch 9.1, the season for PvP, season 2, is going to begin the week after patch 9.1 release. 
But prior to that, you can do two things. You can first of all test out all the new honor towns while simultaneously grinding some honor points. You're going to need those honor points for the new conquest gear because that gear is going to scale in PvP. So it's going to jump in item level once you enter PvP scenarios like war mode or battlegrounds, RBGs, arenas. But also, if you have some alts or a character that you're trying to catch up, getting some base honor gear and upgrading the honor gear will at least get you started when competing against others in this new season for PvP. But with the sheer amount of honor towns that have been added, I genuinely think someone can just play a couple different alts, trying out all these honor towns before the season begins to figure out the honor town combo that you want to run in arena. I mean, the amount of stuff they added, like frost mages being able to build literal walls, warlocks being able to port enemies out towards their gateway, non-elemental shamans now have a knockback and more. There's so many different ways for us to play our characters in PvP that have been added for this 9-1 patch. I feel you can spend hours in battlegrounds just testing out all the different combinations, finding out what fits your playstyle best. Finally, we have Torghast changes as well as Soul Ash and Soul Cinders changes. So we got some legendary currencies to farm as we upgrade our legendaries to a rank 5 and a rank 6. So stepping into Torghast is going to be more or less mandatory. But Torghast got a couple updates like the vendors on Torghast can actually grant you cosmetics. You can get back pieces or shoulder pieces that are unique to Torghast and all you have to do is spend some Phantasma on it. So instead of buying up same boring powers, you can now buy cosmetics. Also, you have extra floors of Torghast which can reward you with cosmetics and end game rewards as well like sockets on your gear. But you have to do extra activities like being able to get a 5 star flawless run in Torghast. That means slay every single enemy, destroy every phylactery, help out every forsaken soul in the hallways of Torghast and also do it at a fairly decent quick time. If you're able to accomplish all these things then you should be able to unlock extra floors of Torghast for extra goodies and extra rewards. There's also other things for Torghast like a new talent style system where the more runs of Torghast you do the easier your next runs for Torghast can be for those of you that are struggling which could be useful once Thrusting Quarter Season 2 comes out whenever that happens if it happens but I'm just gonna end it right here with Torghast. So there's quite a bit to do in this first week of patch 9-1, but the one thing that you can do is any of the seasonal stuff. The new raid does not unlock until the next week. The new PvP season does not start until the next week. The new Mythic Plus, the rewards, and the new Affix does not start until the next week. So this is kind of like a first week to catch up your character if you haven't played the game for a while. Time for you to get through the story, time for you to go look at Corthia, get some catch-up gear for your character. And once you figure out all the new zones, all these new systems, all these new changes for patch 9.1, what changes your class has gotten, the PvP updates, once you're more comfortable with it, most of you should be ready and available to tackle the seasonal stuff once it's available the next week so take the time to be proactive this week of patch 91 i feel like there's a lot of things players can do in order to set themselves up for greatness going into this patch in order to accomplish the goals they want to accomplish be it ksm getting that rating in pvp finally defeating a boss on heroic or even slaying some on mythic this is a perfect opportunity with a pretty big reset for a lot of players so take the advantage of it Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about this 9-1 week update. And I'll see all of you guys in another video.